Hi guys, I'm here to do another MAGFest video, just like I said I would. I'm going to be doing my haul video today. I usually do one of these every single year that I go to cons, and over the years it's kind of diminished a little bit. I really didn't buy much this year, and I was sort of shocked actually. There were even some days I went that I didn't buy anything at all. And I think there's a couple different reasons for that. The first being that of course I've gone to cons for several years in a row now, so I have quite the accumulation of things. So I kind of ask myself, do I really need another t-shirt? Do I really need another poster? Another this, another that, etc. A lot of different uh, vendors go to these different events, but there are also a lot of the same vendors that go to every single one of these events that I see every single year. Two examples being Sanchi, which are at every single con I've ever been to, and Video Games New York. There's a couple of other ones I can think of um, as well, but again, when you have the same vendors going to the same events, you get a lot of the same merchandise, and there's also some things where I see they're selling the same things, some things I've already purchased, some things I've already looked at and said, I'm not interested in from previous years before. MAGFest was kind of amazing in the sense though that I didn't really have to buy anything to have a good time, which is the way that it should be. Regardless, I always have a good time at these cons anyways, but I think MAGFest was just so big and it had so much to do that shopping really wasn't the, uh, the highlight of it. And a lot of the vendors were not selling games. It wasn't really game related. There were a lot of um, independent artists. There was a lot of people selling uh, posters and artwork that was absolutely huge. People selling uh, jewelry and other handmade things. And then of course you have your other vendors as well. Um, but I was really shocked at how few games there actually were. And I was also surprised at how small the actual vendor area was for such a large event. Um, so all in all, again, I have a couple of things to show you, so I guess I'll just stop talking now and I'll get started with some of the things that I purchased. So I'm going to start with my games, and again, really not that many here, as many as I've bought in previous years. I remember looking back my first year I went to PAX East and I think I bought like a stack of games like this big and I could barely fit it in my suitcase and that, you know, just kind of diminishes every single year. but. Wouldn't be a con if I didn't pick up some sort of Resident Evil merchandise. So the first thing I picked up um, is actually a Game Boy Color cartridge of the original Resident Evil. Um, the original Resident Evil for Game Boy Color was actually cancelled, 90% finished. Um, it was later released to the public and it was finished by fans and it was put onto a cartridge. Um, I also bought my copy of Mother 1 and 2 that was put onto a Game Boy Advance cartridge from the same company last year. Um, they sell a lot of really interesting um, ROM hacks and fan-made games that they've put onto an actual cartridge and put um, into their own cover and whatnot, which I think is really, really cool. So again, this was something that I wanted to definitely sort of um, add to my collection and I think this makes, I think, three or four copies I have of Resident Evil, of the original one, so one day I will stop. And the other game I picked up was an in-the-box version of Resident Evil 2 for the N64. Again, this is mostly just a fantastic collector's item. I have Resident Evil 2 still in the shrink wrap plastic that I purchased last year at Too Many Games, which was in my last haul video. Um, so again, I have multiple copies of Resident Evil 2, but as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Resident Evil, and so if there's anything I see that I think is really particularly a good find, um, I usually pick it up. And I mean, this has absolutely everything in it. If I can take it out of the box, it has the game in it, which is in very, very, very good condition, and it also has the instruction booklet with it. Um, I bought this for a pretty good price, and so I was very, very happy to find that and add that to my collection. There were a lot of other games I found there that I could have added, um, such as the PS2 version of Resident Evil 4, and I think there were also 
There was also a version of Resident Evil 3 that I didn't have. I do believe it was the GameCube version. Um, but again, I kind of try to pace myself and kind of remind myself, you know, that I already have these games. So that was it for Resident Evil, but I did buy a couple of other things. I bought the DS version of Chrono Trigger. Um, I figured this would be something to do to actually pass the time while I was at the con because I've never actually finished Chrono Trigger, which is a shame. Um, I've played it a couple different times, but never actually sat down and gone through the entire thing, which is a shame because I've never heard anything but good things about this game. I hear amazing things about the music, and there's really nothing bad that anybody has to say about it, so I figured it was about time to actually um, finish that. So I have been working on this since the con. I bought Etrian Odyssey 3, The Drowned City. The vendor I was talking about, Video Games New York, they, every single year I've gone, they've sold pretty much every single um, game of Etrian Odyssey. Um, Base 6286, my friend uh, who used to be here on YouTube, got me into the Etrian Odyssey series and I started playing it because of him. Um, I've played the first and the remake of the first and the problem is because I go to these cons every year I tend to forget sometimes what I've already purchased. So I had forgotten if I had purchased the second one or not so I thought I would play it safe and just pay for the third one. They also had the fourth one and a couple of other versions but they were a little bit too steep for my liking. Um, Etrian Odyssey is made by Atlas um, who tend to only make very limited supply um, of their stuff so these games are quite expensive but again they are a ton of fun and if I ever do want to play the other ones and I don't happen to get them in hard copy, um, they are available on the eShop. So I am really looking forward to actually breaking this one out of the, uh, the plastic and giving it a shot after playing some of the other ones in the series. I purchased Tales of the Tempest, which was a Japanese-only Tales game. As you guys know, Tales is my favorite game series of all time. Uh, this is actually not region locked. Uh, I, I asked them about it. Uh, usually want, if you buy uh, cartridges that are uh, from a different country or they're imported, it will tell you if it's region locked or not. So apparently I can play this on my DS if I wanted to or my 3DS. But again, I think that this is just a, an item that is more or less uh, a collector's item for me. This is something I just wanted to add again to my Tails collection. Probably something I'm never going to take out of the plastic. Um, and again, a very nice find for a very, very nice price, and I was very happy to get a hold of this. And it is kind of a shame that, you know, I don't speak or understand Japanese, because if I did, I would very much um, like to play it. But again, it's probably something that I can look up on YouTube or something like that um, to get that experience for myself. I managed to find a relatively cheap copy of Final Fantasy VIII at the con. Um, I have a couple of the older Final Fantasy games on PlayStation in hard copy. Obviously not seven because it costs a fortune, um, but I do have nine and again I have a fairly extensive collection of Final Fantasy games that I actually have on um, disc or on cartridge and I actually have hard copies of them. So again, um, I did a bit of shopping around because there were several vendors that were selling this. I managed to find the cheapest uh, copy of it and again I sort of just picked that up. I also have this on Steam, I have it on uh, PlayStation, but again I was lacking the um, physical copy of it. So I have a lot of different options um, about where or what I actually want to play this on, which I really hope that I can do someday. I haven't quite made it to Final Fantasy VIII yet, but I am hoping that I will be able to do so in the very near future. And then finally, the last game I picked up was something called Fantasy Star Universe. This is the only kind of game in this collection of stuff that I bought that I have absolutely no knowledge of whatsoever. Basically the vendor that I bought Final Fantasy uh, 8 from and another game I bought was basically to buy two games and get one for free. So 
I had purchased those two games, looked at what they had, wasn't really satisfied with anything, uh, and this sort of caught my eye. I thought, oh, this looks good. Uh, which again, sometimes I do. Sometimes I'll go into a store and I'll buy something based just on the box art or the cover art. Um, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you just kind of have to take your chances. Either way, um, it was free, technically, so hopefully, maybe in the next 10 years when I get around to playing this, I can tell you guys how that uh, is going to turn out for me. I guess next I'll go into the posters that I bought. Posters are something that I try not to buy at cons because I have to travel a long way and they tend to get squished in my suitcase. When you travel and you put your suitcase on the plane, uh, the airport personnel are not very gentle with your luggage. Um, so I've had it, plenty of years I've come back and I've had posters that have been completely smushed, they've been ripped or torn. Um, but like I said, there were so many vendors who were selling amazing artwork, um, just great, fantastic posters and I am definitely running out of room in my house. I kind of starting to look like a bit of a video game museum with how much I have on my walls. But I thought critically about it. I tried to buy posters that were a bit on the smaller side. Um, posters for things I already had hanging up so they could kind of go with a theme. Um, so again, I bought a couple of things but I try not to go too terribly uh, overboard. Last year I purchased um, a Leon poster and a Last of Us poster that I featured in my Too Many Games haul. That same vendor was there again this year. I was very happy with the quality of the poster and the work um, that they did. So I purchased two very small posters from them. Uh, this one here is of Tifa from Final Fantasy VII, which again, I like the artwork and I have a wall downstairs where I have Final Fantasy posters where I think she will fit nicely and again the size is appropriate where I think I can fit that onto the wall and it will have space. And I purchased this Fallout poster, Where Will You Be When the Vault Doors Close? Again, small size, um, very nice print, high quality, and I have room downstairs with my Fallout collection that I think I will be able to fit this on the wall and it will be a nice collection. A nice part of the collection, I should say, if I can use my words correctly. I'm going to back up a little bit here so you can get a good view of some of the other ones that I purchased. I saw this one and I thought to myself that I had to have it. This is, of course, Clementine from The Walking Dead and if you can read it at the top, it says, Clementine will remember. I feel like it should, should say Clementine should remember that, but either way, again, this is a, a poster uh, done by an independent artist, which I think is just fantastic, and I hope that I will be able to find a spot for her. I'm sure that I will somewhere, uh, and so I'm looking forward to adding that. I bought this adorable poster of Wind Waker, which, as some of you may or may not know, is my favorite Zelda game, and I this was just way too cute to pass up, and I have a Zelda wall directly over to my side there, and I can definitely find a place to fit that in. And then, every year when I go to a con, I try to get a t-shirt and a poster. Uh, this year, MAGFest was doing a Metroid theme, as you'll see when I show you my t-shirt, um, and of course this was the official MAGFest poster. The only bummer about this is that they don't have the year on it, which is a little bit disappointing. Obviously because it's my first MAGFest, that's not really going to be much of an issue, but it would be nice if they had the year on it so that if I continue to go, I will be able to remember what year this was from. And that poster only cost me $3, which was pretty damn nice in my opinion. And then finally, my favorite find is this Silent Hill 2 poster. I feel like Silent Hill just doesn't get enough love at cons. I sometimes find it very difficult to find uh, Silent Hill merchandise. And again, I thought that this was a very, very nice hand done poster. Um, and I would really like to put that on my wall somewhere. Again, I will definitely find a spot for it um, somewhere. So. I'm very happy with all the different posters that I bought. Now it's just going to be a matter of actually finding where to put it all. 
I almost forgot to mention, because it was just sitting out somewhere different, and I almost completely forgot about it, um, I managed to find a vendor that was selling a lot of different uh, manga and comics and art books and things like that, and he was selling a lot of the Resident Evil Complete Works art books. Um, those kinds of things. So I picked up the art book for Resident Evil Revelations. He was also selling the art book for 5 and 6. I know that I've eyeballed these at one point in my life and I have them on my Amazon wish list and I've really wanted to add them to my collection um, but at the time I wasn't able to look at the vendors prices versus what the actual price online was so I didn't feel like purchasing the five uh, and the six artworks. Otherwise, I probably would have. I think when I got home, I figured out that the price was about the same, um, which you know I should have done because I didn't, wouldn't have to pay for shipping. Um, this one is very cheap. This was about twenty dollars versus uh, RE 5s art book, which I think is forty dollars, and then I think RE 6s art book is almost sixty dollars. So I figured I don't really need those right now. Um, I have a, quite a bit of RE5, RE6 merchandise already, but again, Revelations is a fantastic game. I really quite enjoy it and I don't have enough merch from it. Um, I flipped through this and there is quite a bit of artwork, quite a bit of um, commentary and comments by the uh, team that worked on the game and this is again just a really really sort of nice piece that I've been able to add to my collection and hopefully at some point I will be able to also get the books for RE5 and RE6 if available. And then last but not least I have a couple of t-shirts that I purchased. Before I went to the con I had spent some time at Cypher's house and I honestly think I spent more money when I was there. Uh, we had gone to the mall and there were so many sales and I already bought so many pieces of clothing when I was there. I had so much stuff in my suitcase going to the con that I didn't want to load up too much on stuff. And again, I have a lot of t-shirts, I have a lot of clothes to wear, so I didn't go too crazy overboard when I got to the actual con. I found this Robbie the Rabbit t-shirt um, from a vendor that was at Too Many Games. He was actually the vendor who was dressed up as James Sunderland um, when I did my Heather Mason cosplay last year. We took a photo together and he actually remembered me which was nice so we had a little chat and he told me that they actually stopped printing uh, printing these t-shirts so I guess it's kind of limited edition, limited quantity, I don't really know um, but either way again like I said Silent Hill just doesn't get enough love in my opinion, so if I can add that on uh, into my wardrobe, then I will be happy to do so. And I found this t-shirt from Zelda 1, of course. Very, very famous line, um, and I wanted to add that as well. I have enough Zelda t-shirts, I think, at this point. If I took them all out of my wardrobe and lined them out, you'd be like, that's kind of ridiculous, but again, um, I just thought it was really cute, and I thought I might as well get this. That's kind of what stood out to me the most out of all the stuff that I had seen that I thought I would actually wear. And then finally, I got my MAGFest t-shirt, which again, like I said, they went with a Metroid theme this year. So that is my MAGFest t-shirt for MAGFest 2016, and again, just like the poster, it unfortunately does not have the year written on the back of it, but that's okay. I'm sure I'll I'll deal just fine. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all that I purchased at the con. There's a couple of other things I didn't show you guys, mostly things that I purchased as gifts um, for my friends, but again, like I said, the purchasing of things actually wasn't really the highlight of the con this year for a change, which was really nice. I spent a lot of time doing pretty much everything else. Um, so that's it. I still want to do one more video entailing what I actually did at MAGFest, what I saw, um, and things like that, talking about the experience as a whole. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, so hopefully this video will suffice until I get around to doing that. 
Uh, thank you all so very much for watching, and I hope that I'll be able to bring you another MAGFest video soon. Bye, guys.